Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. On three, man, that's, uh, that's the first time I've heard someone introduce me like that. It's pretty cool. This, is, this has been, uh, man, this has been in the works for it feels like a year now. Um, so this is, this is everything for us, man. This is, if you, if you guys have followed Blue White Illustrated, we've made some crazy changes over the last five, six months. And it was all about yesterday's move, uh, to on three. So encourage fans to check it out. Uh, it's a dollar subscription right now. Uh, the, the, the reaction we've got has been incredible. Um, but, uh, Hey, let's, let's talk some recruiting. Let's, let's fill fans in on what it's all about. Yeah. Let's, let's get to that because after the, um, after the um, Georgia Florida game, uh, Kirby Smart was asked about recruiting, and when he talked about it, he talked about how all encompassing there is. And Smart said, "Quote: There's no coach out there that can out coach recruiting. I don't care who you are. The best coach to ever play the game better be a good recruiter." And of course, a lot of Florida fans took umbrage to that. Another, and he talked about how you know how they make a lot of sacrifices family wise because they're always on the road. You have a lot of experience in this area, Ryan. So, is that your experience? What he said. Well, let's put it this way: I'm looking at our own three team rankings right now. Okay, here here are your top five teams. Alabama number one, Georgia number two, Ohio State number three, Clemson number four, Oklahoma number five, and then the Nittany Lions are number six. So uh, anybody who pays attention to college football will tell you that those top five teams have been pretty much the five dominating the sport for at least the playoff era and you know, for, for Alabama and Ohio State a little longer than that. So I, I think that kind of speaks to itself right there on, on just how important recruiting is. Uh, there, there are coaches out there who move up uh, and, and through the ladder because they are excellent coaches, right? You know, we, we see mid-major coaches, you know, the, the MAC coaches move up eventually and, and, and they, they prove themselves because, uh, you know, they, they have success at that level and, and they, they get to where they go. I mean, James Franklin, for example, has, has climbed the ladder as much or, or, and, and better as, as anyone out there. But when you get to the very top of, of this ladder, uh, it, it's all about the players, right? I mean, there, there's a reason that there are five-star players and four-star players, and there's a reason those guys stand out. So what, while coaching can, can often be the difference between, you know, sometimes maybe, um, you know, not, I don't want to say advancing the playoffs because I think players get you to the playoffs. Maybe, maybe co- coaching is kind of how, how you win sometimes when, when you're competing at that level and everybody – you know, just, just incredibly talented as it is, it, it's, it's really the players that, that put you in that position in the first place. So I would absolutely agree with that. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a recruiting guru through and through. Uh, anyone who's followed me for a decade kind of knows that by now. But, yeah, man, and it, this is what it's all about, right? You, you have those talented players, those elite quarterbacks, those, those, those defensive tackles, uh, you know, who make a difference. And, and just, you know, you can go through every position. But, you know, there are a couple key positions where, where it really stands out. And that's why those teams are dominating, and that's why they have been dominating for a long time. Penn State is right there, I feel like, on the bubble. Man, they, they, sometimes it felt like they're going to get over it. Sometimes it feels like they're dropping a little bit below. But to me, they're, they're right there on the line. They've been on that line for a long time. And um, personally, that's, that's why I think you need James Franklin here for a long time because he's right there. And right, with, that, exactly. with, that, with, that, with that playoff about to expand, uh, to, to me, you, you don't want to do anything to disrupt that. Exactly, because what spurred the question to Kirby Smart was the answer that Dan Mullen gave. Mm-hmm. We're in season right now, Mullen said. We'll do recruiting after the season, and when it gets to recruiting time, we could talk about recruiting. He didn't want to answer the question. And what Kirby Smart says is, that, look, we have to make sacrifices all the time with our families to do this, but we have to do this all year. And then essentially, James does that. He is out there by weeks when he could be, you know, I mean, he's, you know, his family has made sacrifices to make this happen. Mm-hmm. James Franklin has, I don't even want to call it, a, it, it's not a day off. James Franklin has one 
semi night off on Thursdays when he gets a couple hours with his family. Yeah. Oh, and, and by the way, that night is usually when he does a ton of Zoom calls with with top recruits as That's well. Right. And he, you know, he does it from his home. So, yeah, there, there's no denying uh, the commitment that it takes. Um, it, before every just just before Friday night, for example, a big away game. You know, he's out at uh, he's out at watch Caden Saunders' game. He, he's on the road every Friday out there trying to recruit and get his program better. And, you know, that, that's, that's all you can ever ask for. As far as Mullen, he, there's a reason why. He didn't want to answer the question because he knew where it was going. And right. you know, all these coaches, they know how to talk. Uh, Florida is Florida's having one of its worst classes in a while. It, it's still ranked 17th in the country right now. Uh, but they have a couple guys decommitting recently. They're, they're, they've missed out on a bunch of top prospects they were expected to get. So that, that's that's why he said that. Uh, he, I think in retrospect he would have worded it better because it, it you know it came off poorly to the fan base. But the, the reason he went around that that question was simply because he knew where it was leading and right. it was leading to people calling him out for having a poor recruiting class. So hey man, one, one man's uh, one man's mistake is, a, is another man's gain, I guess, with with Kirby and Mullen there, and uh, Kirby's coming out on top again, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, so. Uh, for Penn State, as you go through the season, they already have a lot of verbals in this particular class. Everybody holding solid? Yeah, for the most part. You know, there's a handful of guys down south uh, that, it, honestly, it, I, I, I could sit here and BS, but it's more so they just don't talk. <laughs> so it makes it hard to, right. to get a read on. You know, so I, I don't want to. I don't want to sit to sit here and say, yeah, you know, I talk to every single one of these guys all the time, and uh, all I hear is positive things because there are a few. You know, like Cam Miller, for example, in Florida. I, I don't know if he's ever done an interview with any of us from Penn State. Uh, Andre Roy, now he's, he's from Baltimore. He's not one of the Southern guys, but, you know, he's another guy who just doesn't talk. So there are a handful of guys who just don't open up, and that's fine. You know, not everybody is, is into doing interviews and, and having people bug them all the time, and I have no issue with that, of course. Uh, but I will say that the majority of this class, right, the, the core of this class, the Bo Pribulas, the Drew Alars, the Hayden Saunders, the Nick Singletons, and those are the guys that, you know, obviously I have a good relationship with and, and you know, so do some of my colleagues who cover it. And, and we are in touch, I would say, maybe twice a week or so. And, and there's no reason to think right now that uh, any rumors or something like that would disrupt this class, especially not losses either. Uh, now, I, I would be um, uh, lying, I guess I'd say, if, if people aren't curious to see what would happen with James long term and and that how that situation plays out you know I've talked to parents about it and usually they're just asking me if I know something that they don't which is silly because they have access to James uh, uh, much more than I do at least but uh, there's nothing right now that makes me think we're going to start seeing a, a guy or two leave in the near future uh, Jordan Allen of course uh, he, he, he decommitted recently and that was nothing to do with Franklin it was really because he wanted to take more visits and didn't didn't really tell the staff about it. Right. He that was, his kind of was a communication it. issue. There's no getting exactly. around it. Yeah, and, and I will say that Jordan was kind of given a second opportunity, too, to not take that visit, and then he kind of, from what I understand, kind of told the staff he wasn't going to and then did it anyway. And, you know, when, when you make one mistake and then you, you're given a chance to not do it uh, and then you just decide to do it anyway, that's kind of where Penn State said, okay, we, we can move on here. But the, 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 the core of this class, though, is as firm as, I think any Penn State fan could ask for with, with all the talk of Franklin and whatnot. Uh, and that's, that's because they're incredible uh, young men. I mean, they, Penn State goes after guys who, uh, like I say all the time, man, a lot of them are more mature than me, and uh, I, I give them a lot of credit for that. All right. Uh, now, what are the, in your opinion, the prime targets to finish? Mm-hmm. So w- with, with the Jordan Allen scholarship opening up, I've had a lot of people ask me about that. And, and the best thing I can say right now is that it really doesn't change much as far as uh, adding to the current class. And a big reason why, of course, is the transfer portal, uh, I think, as the season goes along. And this this isn't really a Penn State thing. This is for every school. You you start to find holes, right? Uh, You get four or five games in, six, seven games in. You start to find holes uh, that you think could maybe be plugged better with a transfer. And that's kind of the vibe I get right now uh, in regards to how they would use uh, that that Jordan Allen uh, scholarship. So right now, I, I kind of feel like we're still sitting in a spot where Penn State would like to add one, maybe two more guys max. Uh, linebacker Jay Sean Barham out of St. Francis. Anyone who follows recruiting uh, should know Jay Sean's name pretty well by now. We talk about him all the time. 
he, he, he remains that guy to really focus on. We were watching for maybe a commitment uh, in, in late October, and nothing came out of that, which wasn't a surprise. That was more so uh, rumors, I guess, than, than Jay Sean really saying that. Uh, but, but South Carolina, Florida, they, they kind of seem like the schools there. Or Maryland, too, of course. I, I would actually say Maryland's probably a state top competitor there. And he's just another guy who's incredibly quiet. So I can sit here and pretend I really know what he's thinking. Uh, but that wouldn't be completely true because he, he doesn't open up a ton. So we're relying kind of secondhand on coaches and, and you know, Penn State sources on that one. And, and from the vibe we get, it's, it's that Maryland and Penn State are the top two schools. So I, I think he is, you know, target numero uno. And if they get him, they could be very well be done with the class. Now, there are other guys. Larry Turner Gooden's a top prospect out of California who took an official visit. Uh, O-lineman Emil Wagner out of Ohio is getting closer to a decision. He's about to announce, I believe, in a week or two, although his brother is a graduate assistant now at Kentucky, and there's some ties there, which makes me think that's where he's going to end up. So there are going to be other guys who emerge. I'm sure somebody will pop up late in the cycle, maybe even after the signing period. But this class is pretty much done, and, and, and it's a great class. Like I said, it's number six in the country, according to our own three rankings. And um, and that's giving the staff an opportunity to focus on 2023, which is always important. Right, which is going to be my next question anyway, so you anticipated it well. <laughs> uh, because they have uh, – I really feel like they've laid an incredible foundation on 23. Is that the way your uh, feeling is too? Absolutely, yeah, and they have to because the, the region as a whole for 2023 is down. So don't get me wrong, there's plenty of talent for a school like Penn State to have a lot of success in the mid-Atlantic region. And they will. They, they always do. I have no doubts about that. But the, the wide net uh, that you have to throw this year is, is a lot more down south and, and even in the Midwest, even a couple guys out west like Jaden Rashad, who's a top quarterback prospect we're watching. But, you know, whenever you have Alex Birchmeyer, Matthias Barnwell, uh, Joey Schlafler, and, and Lamont Payne, all three or all four of whom – are four-star guys by at least one or two of these sites. And, and, and you know, most of them, I, I think, will be four-stars uh, pretty much everywhere by the time it's all said and done. Uh, that, that's an, an excellent start. I mean, we're, we, we haven't even signed a 2022 class yet, and you have, uh, you know, four four-star players lined up. But one guy I will mention here is uh, Josh Miller. He's a top offensive line prospect who we were watching potentially for a commitment today. He ended up putting out a top five just a little bit ago, and uh, the vibe I get there is that this is Penn State's to lose. Uh, I, I thought he was going to commit today. I, I talked about that on our podcast a little bit, and up until pretty much Saturday night, Sunday morning, maybe excuse me, more so Sunday uh, night, uh, Monday morning. That that was the plan. He, he decided to hold off, which is fine. You know, he he has about 13 months or so to go, uh, so probably he made the right decision. But this is absolutely trending towards Penn State. Penn State, and Clemson have been the top schools for a while now. I believe he included uh, Virginia Tech, Tennessee, and uh, one other school in there. I forget. Oh, North Carolina. Um, but but this is this is Penn State and Clemson at the top with everybody else in the mix. And I wouldn't be completely surprised if he has a decision here sooner than later. Okay, uh, Michigan will be coming up in a week, um, and that means, of course, visits. Are you getting an initial read on what the visit list could be mm-hmm. for a game like that? Well, we need a kickoff time. That would help a lot. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. I'm serious. It's not the Manhattan Project. Pick one. Move. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. You know, it's, come on. I have a few friends in the industry, and I'll say this. Uh, we know Disney has the right to – well, I'm not saying we know Disney has the first two picks. They get the, the first two picks of the weekend. Yeah. yeah. So it'll end up being basically what they're deciding between is do they want to put Ohio State and Purdue at three thirty or do they want to put Penn State and Michigan at three thirty? They're, they're or or you know, that they're kinda of deciding between those two games and which order they want to put them. So we will find out Sunday, I guess. And and unfortunately it, it does have a major impact on Penn State's ability to put this list together ahead of time. Now, they have probably you know, 20, 30 guys lined up who will be here, and I would expect it to be many of the same guys we've been talking about for a long time now. Wow. You know, the Rodney Gallagher's, uh, you know, a lot of the committed guys. You know, just think of the top prospects within the region. They, they will mostly all be here. The issue, of course, with kickoff times is then trying to get somebody like a Grant Tucker or a Christian Hamilton who are down in North Carolina uh, to, to make a, a long-distance trip for this, uh, especially if it's a noon kick and – 
you know, for a noon kick, of course, they want guys here at 10 a.m. or so so they can see the team arrival and all the good stuff that comes with that. So right. that, that's, the big, that's the big issue right now. I know uh, some people in Lash were really hoping for a kickoff time so they could really <laughs> chip away at that list. But yeah. I, I will say this, you know, for Auburn, we saw 50 uncommitted players here, which was an right. incredible list, something I've really never seen before. Right. And when you add in a pandemic and, you know, two-plus years of not being able to show kids the whiteout, it all makes sense, right? That, 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 that was sure. always going to be a huge list. Indiana was around 20 uncommitted players, which was another great list, another night game, stripe out, all that stuff. Uh, I, I would expect, if, especially if this game is a 3.30 kick, I would expect you know 20, maybe even up to like 30 or so uncommitted players, which would be an excellent list. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. telling you right now, <laughs> Rutgers, Maryland, a lot of schools in the surrounding area would die to have a list like that uh, for, for a 3.30 kickoff. So that's kind of where we're aiming right now. Uh, but it's just so hard to put a put a put a list together right now when you also add in uh, playoff games and so many guys don't know right. if they'll be playing next next Friday night and right. all the issues that go on with that. So we see that every November uh, with with the late kickoff times and playoff games. So lots up in the air, but it'll be you know like I said, if twenty uncommitted guys aren't there, I'd be shocked. One final question, you know, uh, we we know about the quarterbacks, we know about the running backs. You know, we also know that. These are all verbals. So how much are other programs attempting to crowbar some people away? Yeah. Well, we were talking about Florida earlier. Uh, They are chipping away at Cam Miller. He's the cornerback prospect uh, from down in Jacksonville there. We'll see what comes with that. Uh, I've been trying to monitor it, like I said. Cam is not one to talk too much. But uh, when it comes to Drew Allar, Nick Singleton, Caden Saunders, those, those really important guys up there at the top, uh, that Penn State is holding firm, and, and, and really most schools have just said, okay, you know, we understand, uh, you know, that you guys have been committed for a long time now, and, you know, just bugging and bugging and bugging a player, uh, especially when they're into their senior years and they've been through this for two-plus years, uh, it's not really going to help you all that much. So uh, for the most part, I, I don't see much there. You know, of course, everybody likes to talk about Ohio State and Drew Allar and uh, I'll say this. I mean, if Drew Allar ever had the opportunity to, to go visit Ohio State, it would have probably been this past weekend, and uh, he, he did not take them up on that offer. So I, I don't see any reason for fans to, to really worry about other schools or losses or anything like that. It's really just all about, um, you know, James Franklin being locked up and here for a long term. And, you know, I still think that's going to be the, the case long term, but that's what everybody wants to know right now, and we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Sir, it's an absolute pleasure, as always. Do great work, and uh, great to have you on uh, on3.com. Awesome. Appreciate you, Steve. Let's catch up soon.